everyone, fellow quilters. I'm sorry to be a tiny bit late this morning. I was just about to go live and realized the power on my phone was actually quite low. So I had to make a choice between a plugged in microphone or a power cable and I chose power. So I'm sorry if the sound is not as clear this morning as it sometimes is. Let's see who all is tuning in. <clears throat> who was more timely than me? Oh, look at you all. This is awesome. Kathy, passion fruit. Uh, passion fruit is saying, I've just rotated a quilt for the first time and I use pins. My design was very long with rulers. It worked out okay. Yep, we'll talk about that. Mel in Texas, Donna, Gail, Carlene, step-by-step -step quilting, Monica in Germany. Awesome, I suggested this topic and can't wait to hear Susan's opinion. Yes, you did, Monica, and I appreciate that. Elaine, Louise, Dolly, Trish, Wendy, Megan. Uh, just seeing if there's a question. Am I going to the Houston Quilt Show next month? Yes, I am. I will be working the Bernina long arm booth, so you can find me there. Joan and Diana, Tattered Fiddler, Pork chops in the crock pot so I can quilt all afternoon. Good for you. Donna, Scrappy Quilter, Joanne, Debbie, Gretchen, Melanie. So great. Okay, I'm Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. I'm coming onto YouTube live every day for a month, just over a month. Um, just short, casual chats about topics related to machine quilting. You guys know I love it, and particularly I love freehand and edge-to-edge -edge quilting, but these topics are not necessarily about the process of, you know, quilting designs. They're just about things that relate to quilting chiefly on a long arm. So I welcome your topics. If you want to send any ideas in for discussion, you can email them to me, susan at stitchedbysusan.com. Or of course you can type them into the window here. I'm, I don't always see every comment that comes in here, particularly if you're watching a replay after the fact. But either way, I'll do my best to address those topics that you're asking. So talking about these things that, you know, decisions we have to make and choices we have to make. In so many cases, there's not a right way or a wrong way, but there's reasons why we might choose one way over another. And today's topic is like that. We're going to talk about rotating quilts. So in other words, you've got it loaded on your long arm this way and you unload it and you turn it 90 degrees and load it the other way. Why in the world would you want to do that? Well, one main reason, which is either for borders or for some element in the quilt that uh, is a long single element. Obviously a border is. I was watching Tia Curtis had a little video up yesterday. I think that was October 16. Um, she had some element within her quilt that had detailed applique on it. It was like a long strip and she rotated her quilt. You can see why, you know, if it was this way and she had to quilt part of it, details around the applique and fill and then quilt another part of it and then advance and quilt another part of it right? That could be time consuming and difficult to break threads. And so she opted to just turn the quilt so that she could do it all in one pass. So that's the main reason for doing it. It does, of course, bring a level of complexity to your quilting. The time of unloading and loading, just, just period, the pinning or red snappering time, but also the difficulty of once you've added some quilting, that quilt does pull in a little bit and it can be tricky, especially if it's densely quilted, to get it back on the frame when you've turned it and get it pulled out smooth enough so that your new area is not adding more, you know, starting with being pulled up and then adding more pullage and creating a quilt that's not flat. So that's the big challenge in it, is to keep everything flat and smooth. You know, my best tip for that that I've found over time is to have a helper. So when I'm rolling the quilt onto the leader, I've got someone helping me tug it out at both ends. So I'm on one end by the roller and someone else is on the other end, constantly smoothing it out as I roll up, tugging it out. That's been my biggest help in keeping it smooth. And I honestly try not to do this with heavily, densely, like heirloom quality, uh, Judy Madsen type detailed quilting. You know, I don't know if Judy ever takes her quilts off. She has long-term projects because they're so incredibly detailed. Does she ever take them off and turn them or take them off in order to do another project? I'm not sure. So I won't get into that down that rabbit hole today, but that's just one of the things you think about. The more detailed it is, the more it's apt to pull in. 
but I do have an example of a quilt for you today where you might want to rotate, and in fact, it is one that I dismounted. Not to rotate, but because I had to squeeze in another project in between. So a similar consideration, what makes it worthwhile. But you guys, if you were watching Live and Unscripted lately, you saw my friendship quilt, and this is it. And you can see it's got this border, and it runs around all four sides. And I was quilting piano keys, which is just inch wide spaced lines on it. So of course, when I was working on the top edge of the quilt first, you know, that was easy to go all the way across that border and even around the corners with those straight lines. As I quilted, then I did have a decision. Do I want to just work on that each time I advance? Do I want to leave the entire border till the end? Uh, do I want to do the top and then when I get to the bottom, do that and then rotate the quilt and again have a top and a bottom? There's pros and cons for all of these. In the case of this particular quilt, because it was not a complex border, because it was horizontal lines and it was easy to stop because I was quilting out into the edge and it's easy to have stops and starts there, I opted for the most part to do the top one and the bottom one and then later, because I had a thread change factor in there too, right? Later, I wanted to come back then and just do that entire piano key edge with my new color of thread. Everything was stabilized and held in place, so I would have just come back and done them later. If my thread was all the same color, I probably would have chosen to literally do each chunk as I was advancing the quilt because the type of quilting lends itself to stopping and starting easily. I did a quilt, I don't have it here to show you because it's a client quilt, but a couple months back I was working on a quilt that had a border on all four sides and there was an applique like a, a vine, a kind of stem and a couple of flowers. And the way that it was done, there was no applique in the corners, there was just a segment in each border, so top and bottom and each side and they were uh, separate. You could quilt all the way around the ends of them. That was an example of when I did choose to rotate the quilt. It was not a huge one, so there was not a big pull issue at all. But you can go back on my Instagram feed probably a good two months and you can see where I talk about whether or not to rotate a quilt and I talk about that specific design. Because what I learned was with this applique vine, I couldn't cross over, right? So I was stitching in the ditch around all of that applique and then I was doing a fill on one side, which I could do continuously, but then I had to stop and start or go all the way around the end to do the fill on the other side of that applique vine. So it worked well to do one border, one side in one section. I could stitch in the ditch and then I could do the fill and literally round the corner and do all the rest of the fill and that was that. So I did that at the top of my quilt and then, you know, I stabilized, basted the edges, etc. got all the way to the bottom and did that border, filled the inside all up and finished it and then literally took the quilt off, turned it 90 degrees and now what was my sides become my top and bottom. And so it makes it easy to quilt those in one segment as well. So you can see that whole, if I had tried to do it on the side, that whole stitching in the ditch, stopping, filling on one side, stopping, filling on the other side, stopping, would get unwieldy. It's just more time consuming. So I just weighed which way saves me more time or saves me more headache or is easier to quilt. Another idea might be if you're doing a complicated border that has, you know, perhaps a detailed feather that's um, difficult to stop and then pick it up smoothly and have it look continuous when you're joining. That can be difficult to quilt in chunks too. So that's where you might consider doing a continuous top and a continuous bottom one, turning that quilt and ending up with continuous borders again. So all of these things are the things that you weigh. How difficult is it to stop and start? How difficult is it to unload and load back up? How much time is it actually going to save? So think about all those things. All right, let us scroll back and get some comments. I'm getting hello, hello, hellos. Let's see if there's any questions. There's the pork chops in the crock pot. I remember that one. Another Susan in Vancouver Island, Marie Suzanne from the UK. You are watching so faithfully. I sure appreciate you tuning in. Savannah, Alyssa, love meeting up with, meeting up with you every morning. Dawn, sunny Colorado. Great, timing of this topic is right on. I'm thinking of turning a quilt I'm working on today. As always, I encourage you, try these things out and see what works for you. Some quilters prefer to turn. Some quilters prefer to do it in chunks. Some quilters, and I'm one of these, 
I tend not to do super, super detailed quilting. So if I'm doing something like a feathered border, I will often leave my border till last and I'll start at one point and I'll literally lap, you can't see my finger, I'll lap the whole quilt and come back to the beginning so that my joins are seamless and I don't have to turn the quilt. To me, it doesn't take all that much time to, to you know, forward it and then rewind it however many times I need to to get around that lap, right? So that's an option too for borders. Savannah, number 22 today, right? I think it is Savannah. I'm not 100% sure. I do write them down, but then, you know, I go on doing other things and forget. <laughs> Karen in Utah, Daisy, Janice, Mona, terrified to rotate a top, afraid to get the design all confused. For your first time, maybe try it with one that's not horribly complex or that has distinct corners, you know, stop and start areas where it's not, you know, terribly complex to try and do the joins. That might be a good one to, to try it on. Sheila, Kimberly, Helen, Janet, Janice, Debbie. Question, newbie to long arming, would it help to baste around the entire quilt before rotating so that it doesn't pull in as much? Absolutely. As you're advancing to do the middle or to stitch in the ditch of borders or whatever details your quilt entails, absolutely be basting that outer perimeter as you do it. That will not stop entirely pulling that happens when you have quilting. It will help and it will certainly help to keep things where they should be. Your edges will be matched up, right? And basted together. But you might still see that the center of the quilt pulls together a little bit if you've quilted the whole center as I did on the friendship quilt that I was showing you a moment ago. And so just that little bit of tugging helps to flatten it out. Okay, there's my husband. Hey, I know you. Yes, indeed he does. Lauren just heated up my cup of coffee. You're a girl after my own heart. Just like don't tell people that we actually microwave our coffee, okay? Diana, if I do have to turn my quilt, I take advantage of it and go lay it out on the bed and look at the back and see if there's anything I missed or anything that has to be fixed. Great tip. Great tip. It's a great opportunity to look at it as a whole. Joan, question. Just two days ago, I kept the quilt on the frame and advanced or backed it up to do a big feather in the outer border. Yes. Yes, that's my preferred method, honestly, for a big feather, Joan, because I find feathers difficult to smoothly, you know, stop and then come back to it and smoothly transition into the next feather and have that not be a visible look. I do have tips for doing that, by the way, but that's another topic for another day. Linda, Marie, Suzanne, whenever I baste my side borders and come back to them at the end, they're often a little baggy when I return to them. Am I getting something wrong? I don't think you're getting anything wrong. That's just the quality of any amount of stitching, pulling it in a little bit. Like even stitching in the ditch will, will hold things a little bit tighter. So just, that's a learned skill. How much tension to put on the rails of the long arm, how much tension to put on the side to pull things as flat and smooth as you can. I still think, and I'll stick by this till the day I die, Basting is still the better way. It still keeps it under control and helps you manage fullness. We're dealing with fabric, which has flexibility, has stretch. So there's always going to be something to manage, but I think that basting is the best way to do it, but you're not doing anything wrong there at all. Melanie, would you or have you showed us how you do it on previous videos? Would love to see you do that. I don't know that I have showed it. I don't know that I have. It's... Um, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about that. Gail, I'd be interested in the process of rotating. Okay, so I might have to at some point make a quilt that has that. I am somewhat limited in my videos because they usually are client quilts. So whatever processes come across my rails, come into my studio, that's usually what my videos are about. But every so often I'm working on a quilt of my own that I can do by choice too, so. Joan, I use chalk to mark the spine in my border and it joins seamlessly. Yep, that, that's my tip, Joan, but I wanna make that a topic for another day and delve into it a little more deeply. Tiffany's Quilting Life, hey Susan. Tiffany is a fellow YouTuber, by the way, you should check her out. Darlene, newbie here, I have a hexi quilt with zigzag top and bottom. Do I baste horizontal first and then go back and baste the peaks and valleys? That or, or pin every peak so that they, they stay in place, right? And probably, probably use a ruler because it's very difficult to quilt uh, diagonal lines, even with basting, anything like accurately. Of course, if you're in the seam allowance, it doesn't matter vastly, but I personally would save the time and do it all in one shot. I would just maybe pin it to anchor it first and then head into basting it. 
Janice, thanks for all you shared. Daisy, can you type in where you got that quilt from and who is the name of it? Because I love that quilt behind you. It's very pretty. I think I did in yesterday's, but I'll tell you now too. The name of the pattern is Bumblebee Blossoms and it's by Krista Moser, M-O-S-E-R. She's a great pattern writer. I've made this quilt several times. Okay, that's the comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's our chat for today. Couple more things I wanna let you know about. Number one, I'm doing a workshop on Saturday, this coming Saturday, a live workshop, and it's called Freehand Quilting Demythified, Five Myths That Tie Freehand Quilters in Knots and How to Break Free of Them. So these are just things that I think, and I've heard from you, hold, hold people back from diving into free motion quilting because they think I'm not an artist, I can't da 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 da. I don't feel comfortable or I'm afraid of da 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 da. So I'm gonna talk about some of those things and bust those myths. I'm gonna come armed with a ton of photos and stories and show you how to just get started and that if you wanna be a free motion quilter, you absolutely can. I'm not an artist either, so I know whereof I speak is possible. So that is going to be on Saturday. Um, you're going to see it all over my social media all this week, every day, and on Facebook and Instagram, both. I've made it super convenient on any post about that workshop. You can comment or message workshop, and you'll get a little registration link. So sign up for that if you're interested at all. There will be a replay available for a week, so if you can't make it live, not a worry. Still register, because then you'll get the link for that replay. Um, so that's coming up this Saturday at nine in the morning Pacific time will be that live workshop. You'll have a chance to ask questions on the spot, etc., etc. So take advantage of that. Thumbs up if you're enjoying this chat. If these tips are helpful to you, I so appreciate it. Click the notification bell so you do know when I'm going live and I'll be back again tomorrow. Share this with your friends that you think might be interested. I really appreciate that. So until tomorrow, have a great day and we'll chat again soon.